both of the Michigan State players. Well, granted, he spends a lot of time around the program, but he's here in his own backyard to see Michigan State. Well, and I think what it, it also lets people know just, just how passionate the alumni and those that support Michigan State basketball are. They're still part of the family, and that's the culture that Tom Izzo has built at Michigan State, and it's why they continue to have as much success as they have. Michigan State at 6-0, and and they have knocked off both Boston College and Boise State to get to this championship game. For Providence, they defeated Evansville on Thanksgiving, and then upset number 11, Arizona, when Chris Dunn took the game over there the final few minutes for the Friars on Friday night as a three off the mark from Bryn Forrest. And Michigan State keeps it alive, and Matt Costello. Officials tonight, Tony Padilla, Zelton Steele, Chris Rastad are working this three. For this game in Michigan State, the third-ranked team in the country, strikes first. And it comes on an assist, which shouldn't come as a surprise for anyone. They've assisted on over 80% of their field goals so far this season have come off of assists. They spread the floor well, they're patient, and they know how to set the table for their teammates. And Matt Costello with the first points of the ball game. And early, it's Tum Tum Nairn Jr. who draws the assignment of Dunn. Ben Bentil, three. And he has been outstanding at the Wooden Legacy. Bentil has been aggressive. They want him to shoot the three-point shot. Ed Cooley told me earlier today, he's okay. He'd rather have him shoot six three-pointers tonight. That's up from the what they normally ask is just four. But they want him to shoot six because they feel like that takes away Michigan State and takes their interior presence and moves it to the outside to maybe create some lanes for Chris Dunn. With Dunn doing so much in this tournament, also gets lost in the shuffle. What Ben Teal has meant to Providence in this tournament is Valentine missed the floater. And there is Ben Teal for the rebound. And Michigan State absolutely dominating on the glass in the early college basketball season. Providence, it's not a strength of theirs. So they're going to give up some rebounds. But collectively as a team, if you can eliminate second chance opportunities, that's ideally what Providence is looking for. Shot spins off from Tum Tum Nairn, who comes up hobbling a little bit. A foul called on Providence will put the sophomore from the Bahamas, Nairn, at the line. It's on Ryan Fasikas of Providence, his first. A little bit of a, a knee in the thigh area from Fazekas. Inadvertent, but as, as the collisions happen, we see that happen all the time in college basketball. Take a little extra time, tie your shoe. Really, he's just trying to walk it off. A Tum Tum has been outstanding. His assist to turnover ratio, the last 71 minutes that he has played, that's zero turnovers in 71 minutes. And in that stretch, he's had 20 assists. Now three of six in the line this year. Not more shot coming. Not noted for his shooting ability, and that's one of the aspects teams usually will try to gap him up a little bit. But Coach Izzo has continued to encourage him to take the shots. And he missed both. The Friars are up one with the ball. And here is Chris Dunn. Rodney Bullock from the corner. Drains a three. And they'll need Rodney Bullock to step up his play from what it's been so far in this tournament. And a whistle away from the ball to foul on Ben Bentil of Providence, his first. Tom Izzo picked up his 500th career win against Boise State on Thursday and took the Spartans again to the Final Four last year. And Ed Cooley at the other end was taking Providence to the NCAA tournament each of the last two years. You know, the thing that stood out for me, and we talked about this at the shoot around on Wednesday before this tournament even started. Broken up by Chris Dunn. Tries to track it down, saves it from going out. But then the ball goes out near midcourt to Michigan State, but terrific hustle from Dunn. Great hustle by Dunn and deflecting that ball and getting it back. But as I was saying prior to this outstanding effort by Dunn, these were the two most vocal teams at shoot around on Wednesday's practice at Cal State Fullerton. These were the two when you walked in the gym, we're sitting at the table, we're looking up going, and they got some fire. There, there's some passion that's burning deep inside of them, and they've they played like it since they showed up. And Bryn Forbes drains a three for Michigan State. When you're talking, that means you're communicating. You're building trust within your team, and both these teams have a great deal of trust in one another. And Teal has it stripped underneath by Javon Bess. And here comes Michigan State. Valentine rattles home a three.
So after a huge game, a career high 32. For Valentine against Boise State. And seven threes. Hits one right there to give the Spartans the lead. Good hands that time by Tum Tum. Spin move. Bryn Forbes from Valentine. <laughs> you see him make the shot on the previous possession. That time he could have taken the layup if he wanted to himself. Instead, he finds his teammate on the outside beyond the arc and sets him up. Nine straight for Michigan State. And a whistle is done, drives to the hoop. We talk about dynamic talents and versatility in the college game. Denzel Valentine gets the handoff and knocks it down from beyond the arc. And then in transition, could have taken the layup after the spin move here. Instead, sets up his teammate. Trying to get Forbes going. He has struggled a little bit since Benny here. Just two of seven shooting in the two games at the Wooden Legacy. If he gets going, I mean, that's the scary part. Michigan State, to me, is playing the best basketball in the country. And they're not even healthy yet. Strong take by Chris Dodge. Bryn Forbes, the floater. Rattles out and Ben Bentil the rebound. And Providence looks to run. Dunn pulls up. Three spins out and a foul going for the rebound, and it's on Michigan State. And it's on Javon Bess of the Spartans, the sophomore from Columbus, Ohio. His first, second on Michigan State. Now, Providence has got to speed this game up. It's, it's right now playing at a Michigan State pace. And for Providence, they want to get the ball off the backboard and look to aggressively attack and not have to go against Michigan State in the half-court set. Rodney Bullock lost a handle on it. Third turnover by the Friars. What a tournament it's been here at the Wooden Legacy. Providence upsetting Arizona to earn the right to play in the championship game against Michigan State. A lot of people, when they looked at this field, Sean, just assumed it was going to be Michigan State and Arizona. Providence knocked them off. Tight ball game the stretch front end with Chris Dunn made some sensational plays hey. and the rebound Rodney Bullock can't control it Costello saves it it's loose Valentine hustles collides with Junior LaMamba and it's a foul it's going to be on Valentine Michigan State off to a good start from three they're three of four from downtown they lead it by three ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. And Gildan. Every thread counts. There's an eight Michigan State, the early lead of the DirecTV Wooden Legacy Championship game. And the third-ranked Spartans, three of four from downtown, leading Providence. Chris Paul is here, so we've seen Magic Johnson, Chris Paul, some unreal point guards in, in the stands tonight. And, and why are the guards here? Because we got two of the very best in college basketball, including that young man, Chris Dunn, who could have gone last season and probably would have been a late lottery pick, middle first round guy, instead now comes back and he's setting himself up to be a lottery pick, to be a top five pick next year in the draft. Inside to Ben Bentil. And he drops it in to pull Providence within one. You know, Big East has had a great piece week. And if Ben Bentil is going to continue to play at the level in which he has here at the Wooden Legacy, Providence is going to make a lot of noise in the Big East. Matt McQuaid, the freshman from Duncanville, Texas, an outstanding outside shooter is in for Michigan State. So is Deontay Davis, the freshman. Colby Wallenman checks in as well for the Spartans and a whistle and a foul underneath. And that's two. That's two on, on Denzel Valentine with the push off. So he's going to have to go sit down. So some early frustration for Tom Izzo in Michigan State as their star Denzel Valentine right there called for the push. And Junior LaMamba uh, drew the assignment and he is 
One of those gnats at the defensive end of the floor. We saw the other night with Ryan Anderson forced a turnover because anticipation of where he's going to be defensively. Chris Dunn has it stripped by McQuaid. Dunn's got to be a little bit stronger on that move. And now he pokes it away from Matt McQuaid out of bounds. It stays with Michigan State. With five Providence turnovers. The Friars are four of six in the field at both their threes, but they've given it away five times already. I think maybe the more impressive number is the fact that Providence has five rebounds and Michigan State only has two. They have limited opportunities at the offense end because of those turnovers to get defensive rebounds. And this is a team in Michigan State that's plus 20 per game as far as rebound margin. Harris in for Michigan State. The West Virginia transfer. Spins off and Ben Bentil secures the rebound for the Friars. That's his fourth rebound already in this game. He is the defensive rebounder right now for Providence. He's working hard inside. And the jump hook, and Providence takes the lead. Ben's probably saying, why are you guys talking about the guards so much? Why are you talking? Can he gets some love. He has shown up, and he has seven of the 12 points. Three of three from the field. He's done it from the outside, and he's done it from the inside. And what I love about him is how hard he's posting up, establishing his position down underneath on a team that doesn't have a lot of depth underneath. So it is on his shoulders to get it done, and so far he's answered that call. Providence foul on Junior Lamamba, his first. And he has to go over to the bench because he has some blood on him. The official stopping play here. Lamama La Mama gets that cleaned up. Ben Teal doing what he does so well and what he has done well here in this tournament. Watch the roll come off the screen. Look at where he catches the ball, right where he wants. They isolate him, clear it out. A little reverse pivot, soft touch up over the top. He's putting some nice work in. Seven points, four rebounds already. Lamama has to check out here while that cut gets attended to and for the Friars Karan Cartwright the sophomore from Compton down here in Southern California checks in they're in fours in the corner out of bounds Michigan State as Wallenman missed right there point blank put back yeah but that was a great play by Ben Bentil again he was supposed to be underneath, which is why they, they got the offensive rebound for Michigan State. But he had to close out because there was a complete breakdown for the Friars. Nobody was even near fours. Jalen Lindsay in for the Friars as Ben Teal will get a breather here. Again, for both teams, their third game in four days. Played both Thursday and Friday. Off day yesterday, prior to this championship game. Here's Harris. Underneath and the alley oop to Deontay Davis. And Davis has got a great start to his career at Michigan State. Long arms, athletic. We're set and ready for that pass. And the anticipation is the back line of the defense had to step up to the dribble penetration. He is 12 of 13 from the floor in this wooden legacy. And a steal. Michigan State. Here comes McQuay. Harris to the basket. And Aaron Harris, the reverse lay-in, the transfer from West Virginia, who was a big-time scorer for Bob Huggins before sitting out last year, moving over to East Lansing and Michigan State. And it's all about getting used to playing timing within the offense. He has yet to find his rhythm. He's minus 6% from three from where he was a year ago. Those numbers are going to improve. That's the scary part when you think about Michigan State and where they're at right now and where they potentially can be. Chris Dunn keeps it alive after the Ryan Bazikas miss. Rodney Bullock, tough shot. And the rebound. Michigan State and Marvin Clark Jr. That is a low percentage shot by Rodney Bullock. Davis. And the rebound, Rodney Bullock for Providence. Jalen Lindsay from the corner and a good look knocks it down and we're tied at 15. And Cartwright 
a beautiful drive. The defense has to pinch in from the outside, and you get a clean look. Seemed like Bryn Forbes lost the handle on that one. Ron Cartwright attacks and draws the foul. Well, so far, Denzel Valentine, he got off to a pretty good start. Chris Dunn's been quiet, but it's the other, the supporting cast of Providence stepping up, and we're tied at 15. Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by the U.S. Marine Corps. At 7.30 Eastern, number 12, Virginia takes on Ohio State. Then number two, Maryland, and number nine, North Carolina. They reunite. Good rivalry from the ACC days. Tuesday night on ESPN, both games also streaming live on Watch ESPN. Robert Carter Jr., the transfer from Georgia Tech for Maryland, put up some good numbers, averaging about 13 and 7 per contest. Going to be big, trying to battle the interior size of North Carolina. And Denzel Valentine remains on the bench with two personal fouls. Providence ball after the foul against Bryn Forbes. Turnovers have been a problem early for the Friars. Crowd rebounding Michigan State 9-5. So Valentine and Dunn both on the bench now. Ben Teal back in the game. Matt McQuaid the steal. Clark nails a three. First three of the season for Marvin Clark Jr. I love the way McQuaid settled down. Allowed the defense to pass and opened up a clean look for his teammate. Clark who missed the first couple of games this year with a foot injury. Now rounding into form for Tom Izzo. Shot clock at five. Cartwright. Tough shot, hit it. Challenged by Nairn on the play and still hit it. Aaron Harris attacks. And Bentil gets it. Here come the Friars. Bentil rattles it in on the baseline. And he has nine of Providence's 19 points. He's having a terrific tournament. Just playing with great confidence, set a career high in the first night of the tournament, and he has not let off the throttle yet. And Clark came down before he got rid of the basketball and a travel call against Marvin Clark Jr. You well, know, for Michigan State, as it so often does, it begins at the defensive end of the floor. McQuaid has his denial hand up, proper technique in form. Watch the defense run by as he penetrates, settles it down, finds his teammate to knock down the three. It's a good all-around play by freshman. There is Valentine, saddled with the two fouls. We'll see how long Tom Izzo decides to keep Valentine on the bench. Chris Dunn needs to settle down a little bit. He's trying to do a little bit too much early in this game. And he nails that three. And I think that's why Ed Cooley brought him to the bench early. Calm him down, say, hey, look, just play your game. Don't try to do too much. Robin, it's four of six from beyond the arc, and they've matched their largest lead. Seven straight for the Friars. Quickness of Nairn finds Harris. Corner three off from Aaron Harris. Out of bounds. It stays with Michigan State. And now the officials will talk this one over. They've changed the call. Providence basketball. Ed Cooley. It's the call to go his way. He voiced his objection immediately and good officiating by... Chris Rastatter and Tony Padilla, they're getting together to make sure they got the call right. It's about positioning. Sometimes you get stacked up as an official because of where you're at. You're anticipating the call. You try to do the best you can, but you got to count on your teammates. Similar to the players out on the floor. Similar here to the broadcast table. Chris Dunn misses inside. The good news is this. I can count on you, Rex. That's true. We go back too far. <laughs> Bryn Forbes got it from long range. Boy, if he gets going from the outside, it, push, it pushes 
Michigan State into a whole nother level offensively. And they're doing this obviously without Denzel Valentine, the two early fouls, but Forbes heating up from the outside. Three threes for Forbes, and it's a one point game. Championship of the Direct TV Wooden Legacy here in Anaheim. And Providence trying to get Chris Dunn isolated with Tum Tum behind him down underneath. And he's just played great defense on him, hasn't allowed Dunn to have any space. Junior Lamamba. And a shot clock violation as the shot didn't hit the rim, but Ed Cooley saying it did. And Ed Cooley comes way out onto the court, may have been given a warning. And they're giving him a warning right now. And as Elton Steed, the official telling Ed Cooley to get back in the coach's box, as he came, he came jumping out onto the floor there to protest that the shot did hit the rim. And no, it didn't. I mean, uh, it was a proper call once again by this officiating crew. Comes up there. Good ball movement. Three missed by Forbes. That was spectacular movement, though, forcing Providence to shift side to side. And Chris Dunn throws it away, trying to get it to Rodney Bullock. Eight turnovers by the Friars, who lead it by one. Coming up, Jeff Goodman will talk with Tom Izzo coming out of the timeout. Not Direct TV Wooden Legacy from the Honda Center in Anaheim on this Sunday night, along with former UCLA captain Sean Farnham and Jeff Goodman. Roxy Bernstein with you. Providence leading it by one despite eight turnovers for the Friars, who are four of six from three. As they're led by nine for Ben Bentil, nine for Brent Forbes, three threes. And Jeff Goodman with Michigan State coach Tom Izzo. Tom Denzel picks up two early fouls. How long do you stay with him on the bench? I don't know. I, you know, I, I, that's the scary part of these new rules. You know, do I play him and then he gets a touch foul? Uh, I'm going to hang on to him until I, the score changes much. But we got to do a better job rebounding the ball. Nothing to do with Denzel. Thanks a lot, Tom. All right, Jeff. So Tom Izzo, knowing his superstar on the bench with two fouls in a delicate situation here, is Matt Costello way off in the rebound, Jalen Lindsay. Well, minus six on the glass right now. Ben Bentil runs the floor and drops it in. 11 for Bentil, and Providence leads it by three. Pretty remarkable when you think about the turnovers. There's eight turnovers right now for Providence that have led to 11 points for Michigan State. Legal screen, and we're going the other way. It's on Michigan State, and Chris Dunn has four of those turnovers, Sean. And what's frustrating Chris Dunn at, at this point of the game? Well, it's the defensive philosophy of Michigan State. They're, they're playing six eyes defense, and what that means is that three players at all time have to have an awareness of where Chris Dunn is. They don't want to allow him to get any kind of lane and any kind of rhythm whatsoever. So it's three people at all times, and that's going to rotate and change as the game has gone on, and even in the first half. So when he looks to come off screens, you'll see there's always three players keeping track of where Chris Dunn is. Redshirt freshman Kenny Goins in for Michigan State as Javon Bess heads to the bench. He has two fouls like Valentine. I'm thinking about Chris Dunn, he was the defensive player of the year last year in the Big East. He was the player of the year in the Big East. You don't see that very often in college basketball. Matt McQuaid, Costello from the elbow. And a physical rebound as Rodney Bullock was slammed down. And it's a foul on Michigan State. Wednesday night, the Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by the U.S. Marines continues on ESPN. Number three, Michigan State. The Spartans back in action against Louisville at 7.15 Eastern. And then number 13, Indiana. The Hoosiers head to Durham to take on the number six, Duke Blue Devils at 9.15 Eastern. The game also streaming live on Watch ESPN. What did Indiana, those games? Did Indiana struggle over in Maui? They better, they better want to commit to play defense when you're going to Cameron Indoor Arena. I mean, you go to Cameron, and you're taking on Duke and Grayson Allen and that high octane offense, you know, that, that could be an absolute track meet in that game. One more for Rodney Bullock, who has five. And the sophomore from Hampton, Virginia, who missed the last couple of years, one via suspension, the other via injury. But yet he puts Providence up five. It's their largest lead. 
using Bullock to kind of replace those, those minutes in the statistics of Levante Hetton from last year. I mean, he was huge with not, almost 20 points and seven rebounds per contest. Second he came leading scorer in Providence history. Yeah, he came into this game and in this tournament playing really well, but he has not put up big numbers since he's been out here on the West Coast. Matt McQuaid off the mark, out of bounds. It belongs to the Friars with 5.49 left in the half as Michigan State has made just one of their last seven and a scoring drought of nearly three minutes. And now Valentine comes back with the two fouls. And I think Tom Izzo, going back to what Jeff Goodman was talking about with him, it, you know, kind of feeling this game and seeing where it's going. He said as long as the score kind of stayed the same, he was okay. But sensing Providence, gaining a little bit of confidence. If you're Providence, and it clearly is Junior LaMamba called for the offensive foul. And that's his second personal foul. But if you're Providence and Valentine's in there with the two fouls, do you go at him? Do you try to get that third on him? No question. You try to put him in an on-ball screen situation and try to see if you can look to attack. Dante Davis back in for the Spartans. You think about Valentine's numbers. We already touched on the triple-double. He had in the opening round of this tournament, of course, against Kansas as well. Then he sets the career high. And Spartan through and through. He understands the pride of putting on this uniform and has embraced his role this year as he continues to become more of the leader than maybe even some of the supporting roles that he had over the course of his career. Inside 10 of the timer. Desperation shot from Nairn. And the rebound, Sky Ford, here comes Dunn. Chris Dunn. Maybe trying to do too much right there. And then called for the foul. He put on a series of moves, got some oohs and ahs just on, based on the dribbling ability, but did not finish. The, the key really for Chris Dunn is he's got to stay between the lanes and and that's kind of an invisible line that Ed Cooley talks about with his team that goes about two feet outside the painted area on the floor from end line to end line. There's Valentine yeah. and a bump called on Karan Cartwright of Providence his first foul. Cartwright trying to fight, fight over the screen and tough assignment when you're asking him to defend Denzel Valentine. 16 fouls on Providence, so the next one will put Michigan State into the bonus for the rest of the first half. Valentine rattles in a three. Bullock is slow in the closeout, slow, putting his hands up. And you have got to be there on the catch with Denzel Valentine. Two-point game. Shooting 45% from three on the season. And Michigan State, 6 of 12 from three in this game. Rodney Bullock backs down Goins. Now the fadeaway. And the rebound, Brent Forbes, for the Spartans. Valentine again. This one off the mark, and Chris Dunn rips it down. DC on the move. And a low pass from Cartwright that Jalen Lindsay can't handle. Another turnover by Providence. Denzel Valentine will saddle the two fouls real quick. He had to go to the bench, but he comes back off looking to contribute and change the way the game is. If you're going to close out, your hands better be up, because if they're down, Denzel Valentine will do that. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Lowe's, never stop improving. Championship of the DirecTV Wooden Legacy from Anaheim coming up at the half. Join Chris Hassel and Andy Katz for the Land Rover Halftime Report. Feast Week tournaments conclude. ACC in action and Andy will break down number six Maryland. Number nine, North Carolina, plus highlights and stats. That's all coming up at the half. And a tight one between Providence and Michigan State. And Sean, give us your winners and losers of Feast Week. Well, I think when you think about Feast Week and you look at the teams that performed well, I think the Big East really comes out 
very well at this stage of the game. When you think about Xavier, Villanova, and Providence now here tonight playing in this game already with wins over Arizona in this tournament. The Big East is in really good shape. I think UNLV had a great week in Maui. Knocking off Indiana, first time they beat a ranked team in something like eight seasons. A good job for Coach Rice to win away from Thomas and Mack and get that young team some experience over there. Kenny Goins hits the jumper. And Michigan State has pulled even here. been the go-to guy in the first half and it continues for the sophomore the native of Ghana do you go anywhere else right now I, I, I don't I just isolate him continue to utilize him in the screen situations where he gets to go down low more with Jeff Goodman Tom Izzo was worried about Ben Bentil and he said listen we don't have that big man Gavin Schilling that can go out there and guard him in the perimeter he's got quick feet he can also guard him in the post Schilling told me He's still about two weeks away, maybe a week and a half from returning from that turf toe. Oh, and Jeff, I think that's the thing that scares most people in college basketball right now is where this team is at and where it's still going to go when they get back to being 100% because they're playing the best basketball out of anybody in the nation right now. Yeah, there's no doubt, Sean. I mean, think about it. Aaron Harris really hasn't found his rhythm yet. Mac McQueen is still a freshman. Look at Davis and what he's done. I mean, he's got incredible upside and Tom is so questioned his toughness coming into the year he's given him far more over the first seven games or so Deontay Davis ties the game for Michigan State at 28 there's the breakdown Ben Teal is in the guy to carry the load here for the prize there's him on the bench now you're gonna look at either Chris Dunn attacking from the perimeter or Bullock as your two offensive options. Here's Dunn. Long on the three. Rebound out of bounds. Last touch by, they say, Michigan State. It goes to Providence. By the way, Denzel Valentine on the bench with those two fouls right now for Tom Izzo. And Bentil comes right back into the game. A very short break for him. But Tom Izzo got a couple of minutes. Tied the game right back up. And put Denzel Valentine down. Rodney Bullock attacks. And the lay-in by Chris Dunn. And a whistle off the ball and a hold will put Michigan State at the line. Drive, the defense slips over, and a nice little dump down pass by Bullock. The easiest and cleanest look that Chris Dunn has had here in the first half. Just three for eight shooting for Chris Dunn. Second foul, Ryan Fazekas. And the free throw goes for Bryn Forbes. 79% so far in the young season. And a transfer from Cleveland State with 10 and a high school teammate of Valentine at Lansing Sexton High School. They won a state championship yep. for Denzel's dad. And Forbes. Knocks the game up at 30. It's our fourth tie. We've had five lead changes already in this championship of the DirecTV Wooden Legacy. We thought the game was going to be outstanding. You, know, you and I talked about it as soon as the contest ended on Friday night. These were the two teams that were playing the best here. I mean, I know the rankings say that Arizona was the higher ranked team, but I really think Providence has outplayed them in this field and obviously earned the right to get here by beating them. Done to Ben Teal. We didn't have good control of it going up, and then it's a foul on Providence, and we're going to the other end, and Michigan State will shoot free throws. And it's on Rodney Bullock of Providence, his first. And let's face it, we have two of the premier players, if not the two premier players in college basketball, with Dunn and Valentine. And the discussion for National Player of the Year, and Obviously, Ben Simmons has been a big focal point nationally and leading the country in rebounds. The freshman for LSU has been outstanding, but these two experienced players have led their teams in the early stages as well and deserve all the talk that they've been getting. Here at the Wooden Legacy Tournament brought to you by DirecTV. And of course, the John R. Wooden Award at the end of the season. Both of these players are on the list. Kenny Goins misses a free throw in this tournament, of course, named after John Wooden, which you had... Sean, during your days at UCLA, a relationship with, and you had to be so lucky to be able to pick his brain while you were a Bruin as he attended 
all your home games at Pauley Pavilion. It's been teal misses. Never missed a single home game and numerous conversations as part of a coaching clinic where he put the UCLA basketball team through what his practices were like. Yes, it started with putting on our socks and shoes correctly as all the stories <laughs> that you've heard. Bump on Karan Cartwright is second. I'm happy to announce though that, that I did it properly the first time. He didn't make you cut your hair, did he? No. Well, there, look at that. As Coach Wood and I had an alumni function shortly after I graduated UCLA. The amazing thing about it is he's wearing a name tag. <laughs> As if uh, people uh, need to know who that is. It's a UCLA basketball alumni function. It's only former players and coaches and managers there. And Coach Wooden had a name tag on. Doesn't matter what the event is, anybody knew. Everybody knows who John Wooden is. And, uh, every time I've looked at that picture since then, I always think back, I'm like, he didn't really need that. But a very humble man and a great leader of life that has influenced not just college basketball and coaches, but CEOs and companies and all the leadership, the books that he's written. Rim Forbes gives Michigan State the lead. Chris Dunn, pretty spin on the baseline and a strong finish inside. Nine for Dunn. He finally got him in that post-up situation where he could be aggressive and feel the defense. And when he feels it, his first step is as explosive as anyone's in the country. Pinned and sealed on the high side, good pass. Tum Tum a little step away from the baseline and then immediately look to attack. And he's so strong he can finish through that contact. And he took advantage with his quickness of a guy who's as quick as they come in college basketball in there. I think when you think about his size and then his first step, that's what excites people at the next level. Out of bounds. Michigan State ball. What a well-played first half. High-level basketball here toward the end of November. And Michigan State can play for the final shot of the first half. Michigan State, I think they're really pleased right now, regardless of what happens on this possession. And Denzel Valentine playing as limited minutes as he has here in the first half with those two fouls. That what should be at worst-case scenario for Michigan State, a tie ball game with 11.7 seconds left to go. Tom Izzo's going to talk it over. Denzel Valentine, he's checking in. Why do we... 0.7 seconds of the first half. The tie ball game in Michigan State, as you alluded to right before the break there, Sean. Valentine back in. Any any doubt of who you want to have take the shot or who you want the ball in the dance? Here he goes. Inside and Deontay Davis with a slam. And Providence takes a timeout quickly. And quickly they will sub back in and Denzel Valentine will go to the bench. Mission accomplished for Tom Izzo. You put the ball in the hands of your best player who happens to not only be your best scorer, but also your best facilitator of the offense. The high screen, come around the corner, Ben Bentil over helps, and in doing so, easy at the rim, Davis. The assist from Valentine. That's perfect execution. And that is the earmark of really both of these two programs, right? If coach calls a timeout, can you come out on the floor? Do you execute it to perfection? And Tom Izzo's teams consistently have done that. They have 11 assists on 12 made field goals here in the first half. And Tom Izzo takes advantage of Providence calling the timeout to get Valentine out so he does not pick up a third before halftime. Now it's Chris Dunn's turn. Dunn. Left it short, and we've gone to halftime. Tight ball game. We expected a good one between Michigan State and Providence in the two-point game. Hey, ben Bentil has been the reason why tonight, even though the stars are Denzel Valentine and Chris Dunn, Ben Bentil has been the, the heart and soul for Providence here in the first half. You see Valentine and how strong he's played in the limited minutes. It's going to be a great second half. Let's send it over to Jeff Goodman with Providence coach Ed Cooley. Ed, the good news, you've done a great job on the glass. What's been the issue that you're worried about? You know, we, we, we're doing too, I mean, we're, we're turning the ball over trying to go too quick in transition. We want to play fast, but we want to be under control. We may have double-digit turnovers for the first time all year, and that's telling us we're, we're trying to do too much too fast. we got to settle down, slow down, and we gave up six threes already. We've got to do a better job 
settle down. I like where we are right now. I love the fact that our kids are competing. It's going to be another war for 20 minutes. Best way to stop Denzel Valentine? Keep him on the bench with foul trouble? Uh, yeah, he's a great player. I mean, you know, he does a lot of special things for him. Comes in, gets, gets them a layup. Hopefully we do a better job second half. Thanks, sir. Great stuff with Ed Cooley there. Jeff is Providence and Michigan State. Both their stars started a little slow in this one. Denzel Valentine got in early foul trouble. Chris Dunn trying to do too much, but then they got going. And a tight championship game in Anaheim. Coming up, the Land Rover Halftime Report. To the good old days when the mama sang us to super now. The Direct TV wooden legacy on ESPN tonight from the Honda Center in Anaheim. Getting ready for the start of the second half and a tight one, a two-point game. Tonight's game part of ESPN's Jury to the Tourney presented by Sonic, a season-long spotlight of games that will impact the tournament. Number three, Michigan State 34, Providence 32. Let's take a look at tonight's performance run of the game brought to you by Royal Purple and the stars of the night, Sean. Denzel Valentine and Chris Dunn, slow starts, and then they got going. Well, slow starts and they did get going, but you think about Denzel Valentine and his stat line as we look at one of the four turnovers that Chris Dunn has had, but eight minutes, six points, three assists, no rebounds yet for Denzel Valentine, but he came in up in big moments, and this was great execution out of the final timeout. And at the other end of the floor, Chris Dunn, as much as we talked about the turnovers and the awareness of where he is out on the floor, four of 10 shooting, but he still has nine points, five rebounds, and four assists. So he's on pace for a near triple-double at this moment. The Stars will come out here in the second half, and a big reason why I believe they will is because Forbes and Ben Teal have done an outstanding job in the first half picking up the slack. Turnover is a big problem for Providence in the first half. They committed 10, which Michigan State used to outscore the Friars 13-3 in points off turnover. Well, how about points to the paint, though? The edges with Providence. I think it's a good sign. Here we go. We've got Valentine on Dunn. And Ben Teal. And Matt Costello changed the shot. Valentine, long two. Jeff, you had a chance to catch up with Coach Izzo. Yeah, Tom Izzo was not happy, needless to say, even though they had a couple-point lead at the break. He said, we're getting dominated in every phase of the game. Rebounding was the biggest one. And he said, Denzel Valentine, I'm okay with the foul. What I'm not okay with is some of the shots that he's jacking up right now. Uh, what we saw so far at the start of the second half is exactly what I just alluded to. The Stars coming out, playing a little bit calmer, a little bit more composed. Valentine at this end, and then Chris Dunn at the opposite end, knocking down the jump shot. Turnover by the Spartans. Bryn Forbes could not save it. Ball goes over to Providence. Only the fifth turnover for Michigan State in the game. Tum Tum Nairn Jr. Bryn Forbes, Javon Best, Denzel Valentine, Matt Costello for Tom Izzo and Michigan State. Both teams at 6-0 into this championship game as Chris Dunn can't finish. And here comes Michigan State. Costello left open, doesn't shoot. Valentine from deep. And Dunn elevates for the rebound, tips it over to Rodney Bullock. Junior LaMamba to the basket. And we're tied at 36. And Chris Dunn's ability to thread that pass up the floor. His head is always up as soon as he looks up the floor. He keeps it up surveying at all times. Seeing the multiple options that he has available to him and found LaMamba that. Dunn, LaMamba, Rodney Bullock, Ben Bentil, Ryan Fazekas for Providence. Shot clock at five. Nair. Forbes does not get it off. It's just great defense by Providence. And what Tom Izzo is asking Denzel to do is to be aggressive, start turning the corner. You know, sometimes when you struggle in the first half and you have some foul trouble, you become a little bit passive. And I think Denzel Valentine, that's what Tom Izzo was talking about, is being more aggressive, asserting himself to drive. Providence looking for the lead. Each team led by as many as five in the first half. 
Junior LaMamba just pulls his way to the basket. He's got great upper body strength and a nice job on the counter attack up over the top. Junior from Montreal gives Providence a two point lead. From the corner, three is off the mark from Valentine. Tipped by Providence, it stays with Michigan State. Junior LaMamba uses the strength of his game. A little drive by Denzel Valentine got caught with his feet too narrow, gave up the lane. The defensive help side a step slow. Entertaining game so far, Roxy. Valentine. Missing the three, Ryan Pasekas the rebound. This is a high-level game played here toward the end of November. You see that pass? That's got to be finished. I mean, that should be an assist for Chris Dunn. Now in the counter, here come the Spartans. And a block called on the baseline as Dairn went underneath. And it's on Junior LaMamba, his third. That'll bring Karan Cartwright in the game for the Friars. Well, and when you bring Cartwright back in, it, it doesn't only really impact the offensive side because of what LaMamba's strength can bring, but it also impacts the defense. Now, he is a very physical defensive player and at times has been playing with Denzel Valentine guarding him at the defensive end of the floor. Along with Sean Farnham and Jeff Goodman are a great ESPN crew. Roxy Burns team with me, the Honda Center championship game. Direct TV wooden legacy. Denzel Valentine lost it, got it back, and gets the roll. I like the fact, though, that Valentine got in the paint that time versus just settling for the three-point shot. Ben Bentil is isolated on the block, but Costello doing a nice job staying up high, forcing him to get outside, outside of his line. Shot clock inside five. Done. Tough shot. Challenged by Valentine, and Nairn races up the floor. And he draws a foul on Dunn, his second. Nairn will go to the line, but coming up, we've got a point guard of our own. He's joining us, Chris Paul, CP3, will be with us next. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Lowe's, never stop improving. Ravens. Tie game of the championship of the DirecTV Wooden Legacy in Anaheim, along with former UCLA captain Sean Farnham, Jeff Goodman, Roxy Bernstein with you. Joined by Chris Paul, former Wake Forest star, now, of course, with the LA Clippers. And you made the little drive down here. What do you think so far of this uh, Michigan State Providence game? Man, it's a great game. Uh, both two well-coached teams. Uh, assistant coach for Providence, Jeff Battle, was uh, my assistant coach when I was at Wake. And uh, he molded and guided me when I was in school. And we have kept that relationship over the years. And he's been telling me a lot about the, the kid Chris Dunn. And I, I wanted to get down here and see it for myself. What's your initial impressions of Chris? I uh, like him. like him a lot. Uh, big guard, rebounds really well. Uh, and you can see that his team feeds off of his energy. You know, I spoke with him yesterday on the bus ride over to Disney. It was his first time ever going to Disney. And I said, you know, who do you look at in the league? And he said, he named a lot of players, but he said, you know, in particular, you and leadership. What is it you think makes a great leader at the point guard position? Um, at, at the point guard position, uh, you, you're just in charge on both ends, defensively and offensively. You know, you set the tempo for the game. Uh, it's your job to get everybody else involved as well as, uh, you know, the way that he plays. He has to, he has to score, too, and be aggressive. And uh, from what I've seen, he's been doing a really good job of that. And check call. That's three on Denzel Valentine now. Michigan State is also one of the career players in college basketball. Chris, uh, what have you, I mean, I know it's been hard to gauge because he's been in, out of the game with foul trouble. Yeah. But what have you seen from Valentine? Solid, solid. Uh, I think he got a couple uh, triple doubles past few games. You can see. 
You know, he just does everything for that team. Uh, I was talking to Brandon Dawson, uh, one of our rookies who used to play at Michigan State about him. And uh, this, this is what college basketball is. You need guys like that to lead. And, <laughs> and Valentine's that guy. That was a sensational pass by Chris Dunn. The awareness to find Bullock underneath. Rodney Bullock with the hoop, and Providence has the lead. One point game here with 15 minutes to go in this championship of DirecTV Wooden Legacy. And reach and foul called against Providence. And all right, that was a great pass. You, you make great passes all the time. Break this one down for us. Um, man, it looked like a nice play. You know, he ducked in, big fella caught it and finished it. And he did such a good job. Chris Dunn getting his head up the floor, always looking and surveying the defense, trying to find his teammates. News tonight, though, out of the NBA. Kobe Bryant officially announced that this is his final season. What, what goes through your mind when you think about 24 no longer in the purple and gold at the end of the year and what he's been able to accomplish? It's crazy, man. Uh, I was having a conversation with a few of my friends in the league, and we, we were talking about uh, how you know that time is coming at some point for all of us, but you're just never ready. You know, what, what Kobe has done for this game, uh, you know, words can't describe it. You know, uh, I... I really don't know what to say. I mean, Kobe is a staple of this league. Uh, if not for him, the league wouldn't be where it is today. Uh, he just transcended the game, and, you know, it's going to be tough to see him go. For you, we, we were building this, and it's to the premier players in college basketball going up against one another tonight. Chris Dunn and Denzel Valentine. You're one of the premier players in the NBA. When you go up against those matchups, whether it's Kobe or whether you go up against Steph Curry or LeBron, do you get a little bit more amped for those games too? No, you can't tell you the truth. Uh, I think the great players and why Kobe is who he is and why great players are who they are is because they, they get up every night, no matter who you're playing against. Uh, Coach Battle and uh, my late coach, Skip Prosser, used to always say it's a team game played by individuals, right? So every night you got to get up to play. And these scouts here, who I know some scouts from around the league is watching, you know, one thing that they told me early in my career is they come to these games, but they also come to the games when you play the not-so-good teams to see if you get up for those games because that's a sign of a true professional. Nice win for the Clippers today. Yeah, we'll take it. <laughs> yeah. What, what, where is that team right now? Where is your squad at right now? Expectations high. Chris Dunn, a beautiful pass down low. And Ventil with a strong finish. But where are the Clippers at right now? How do you guys get the consistency to meet the expectations that so many had as we take another look at Chris Dunn? Yeah, I think for us, it's all about consistency. You know, um, it's not about everybody's expectations. It's about what we expect out of ourselves. And, um, you know, it, it, it's coming. It's coming. Ben Bentil with 15, another strong game. I like him. I like him a lot. He got some nice moves on the post. He's solid. I also like the, the kid, Bryn uh, Forbes. 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 Yeah. They both had outstanding first halves, especially considering the fact that ben Valentine was on the bench for so long and Dunn got off to a slow start. Forbes chases down his own miss. And a reset for the Spartans. Chris Paul joining us here. And a reach in foul on Chris Dunn, who doesn't like it. And that's the third on Chris Dunn. So Dunn has three. Valentine has three. When you're out there and you've got three fouls, Chris, or in, when you get late in the game, if you got four or five, does that change the way that you play the game, knowing you're in foul trouble and how it yeah, it's, for your team? Yeah, it's tough. And I saw Chris, as soon as he got that foul, first thing he looked at the coach and said, I'm cool. You know, and you don't want to come out the game, but as a coach, I also understand where you, you really can't take that risk of him getting a charge or something like that. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do without him on the floor. Denzel Valentine also off the floor, and this is where I think you got to go back to Ben Teal. He's got the freshman on him underneath. No Let question. him utilize his strength. Perron <laughs> Cartwright. A product of Copton High School here in Southern California. Nice, strong move. Got his base underneath him, elevated up over the top with soft touch. Largest lead for Providence, and the alley-oop with the finish by Deontay Davis. Nice. The length of Davis. Yeah. That length translates over regardless of if you're talking college or NBA. If you're long, you can jump, you have good timing. 
going to help you with the length of DeAndre Jordan. Man, can't throw it too high for him. <laughs> oh. Ben Teal steps out, misses, and there's Davis for the rebound. Nice move by Forbes, and one. Green Forbes. I could swear somebody just a couple of seconds ago said they really like the play of Brent Forbes. Yeah, man, he he's smooth. He got a, he's got a motor. You know what I mean? He just he just plays with the right energy. It seems like all game. That was Davis on the alley oop on the drive, and then here comes Forbes in transition. Gets by Lamamba as he reaches the help side defensive rotation to slow the contact up top and the opportunity to try to complete the three point play. And Forbes does. He has. Season high is 16. Denzel Valentine comes back. One point lead for Providence, and Forbes gets a nice hand. The rookies come in the league and they join the Clippers. What's what's the one trait that you think in order to make it in the league? This is something you've got to learn that's different from the college game. Man, you gotta learn the pace of the game. Uh, and then the, one of the biggest things you gotta do is you gotta learn how to play defense. And it's team defense. Ben nice. Bentil. So, nice. so big, so strong right now. And that's the toughness aspect of it. You think about Michigan State, and we always talk about the toughness because of Tom Izzo. But Providence has matched that toughness and that physical nature so far. Aaron Harris, and he draws a foul, will go to the line. Inside 11 and a half minutes to go, Providence by three. Chris, really appreciate that. No problem. Thank, Thank you. you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. Chris Paul, the LA Clippers. Tight one in Anaheim. Providence by three. ESPN's Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. Tuesday night, the Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by the U.S. Marine Corps. At 7.30 Eastern, number 12, Virginia takes on Ohio State, then number two, Maryland, and number nine, North Carolina. Tuesday night on ESPN. Both games also streaming live on Watch ESPN. And Marcus Page, Tar Heels hope to have him for that matchup with Maryland. Well, coming into the year, obviously their best player and a lot of expectations on North Carolina. They took the loss against Northern Iowa in a game that they actually scheduled in order to help get Marcus Page close to his home and then he didn't play in the game and they took the loss so that was a, a devastation as far as the trip goes for for UNC Aaron Harris at line just saw Chris Paul who joined us with his son here courtside at the championship game of the direct TV wooden legacy you know you think about when Chris was coming over and you know, talking about questions we were going to ask him and trying to pick his mind as in his brain as far as being a leader and a point guard and what it means to these guys and first I asked him when he sat down is how much fun is it making those commercials <laughs> and what he say he said he loves it he said his favorite was actually when he got to sit down with John Stockton for an entire day and film that one are we sure it was John or was it Don Stockton either way he had a good time and that's and that's you know you just tell he loves basketball as he's sitting here watching the game and Ben Teal from deep. Aaron Harris the rebound. See, I, I want Ben Teal down low with Davis on him because of Davis's length, it can disrupt his perimeter shot. Michigan State looking for the lead. It's Harris in the lane. And Harris gives it to him. One point lead. For Michigan State. A great drive by Harris, gathering himself, getting his feet set underneath him. Ten lead changes, seven ties. Oh, what a pass. And a foul is called underneath. See, and here's the thing, when you look at Chris Dunn, and you watch that last play, I mean, he doesn't get credit for the assist. But do you know all the guys that are sitting on the baseline? Do you know what they're seeing on this pass right here? They're seeing a finish at the rim. They're seeing a monster dunk. And they're seeing that that game translates over to the next level. Alan Deontay Davis is first. Three on Michigan State. And a strong finish. Chris Dunn to the basket and one. So strong, so physical. Six foot four, turns the corner, gathers himself, switches hands and finishes off the glass. He's an emotional player. 
and when his emotions start riding, as we saw the other night when he had 11 out of the final 13 points to will Providence to the victory over Arizona, we saw that that emotion. And if he gets going here, we, we, and we say that, if he gets going, he's he has 14 points, six assists, and five rebounds. The crazy part of Dunn, guys, as it relates to the NBA, is a year ago from right now, he wasn't even on their radar. Remember, he had those two major shoulder injuries. He had a terrible season opener a year ago, had to work his way back. Last year was the first year he played point guard in the college game. In that opener, too, they went against Albany, and Evan Singletary played defense on him, and I, I, I had them as they opened the season against Tyler Eulis this year at Kentucky. And we talked about Chris Dunn, and he said, look, I know that wasn't Chris Dunn. That was rusty Chris Dunn. I don't want any part of this one. He had two points in that yep. game. Third Both foul on Ben Bentil. That's important because of how significant he's been throughout the course of this game. We we talk about Valentine, we talk about Dunn, but Bentil has been their leading scorer and their most aggressive player and really anchors that defense. And when he goes to the bench, it opens up the interior for Michigan State. One more for Matt Costello, the senior. In Lidwood, Michigan. And it's a one point lead for Providence just about midway through the second half. And a foul called on Tum Tum Nair. Second. Michigan State guard. That's five team fouls against Tom Izzo's team. And with the rules, the way they're set up right now, I mean, Chris Dunn's going to have a huge year because he's going to continue to drive and, and try to get you to play on your heels. And if you make contact, the officials are going to call it. Oh, and Teal was open. Nobody was on him. And a travel. Now, LaMamba waited to get him the ball. He was open for a good two count. And if you're open for a two count, you got to get him to him quicker. First turnover by the Friars in the second half after committing 10 in the first half tonight. Bryn Forbes. And the rebound, Ryan Fasikis, and a foul against Matt Costello of Michigan State, his second. That's the sixth against the Spartans. So the next one will put Providence into the bonus for the rest of the night. In a tightly contested game between two outstanding teams here in the championship. Well, I thought this was a great point that Jeff had brought up when talking to Ed Cooley at the half. We've touched on it numerous times. They're even on the glass right now at 24 apiece. And Michigan State has absolutely been thumping teams on the glass, plus 20 per game. Chris Dunn just gets silly with it. 16 for Dunn. Sean, Ed, when he talked to us earlier today, said, I have no intention of even competing on the glass against Michigan State. They're not only hanging in there, like you said. I mean, they're they're more than holding their own here. Well, and I think that goes to the concept of what he was what he was talking about of we have to run, we have to push the ball. I'm going to talk about our strengths. The re the boards are going to be what they are. But I think his team understands when you play Michigan State and you're playing a Tom Izzo coach group, you got to bring it. If you don't bring it, you're going to get run off the floor. And we've seen that here already with other teams in this tournament. And, and you've got tough kids like Chris Dunn, like Ben Bintil that are bringing it and that's where Tom is was frustrated at halftime he's saying listen we're known for our toughness we're not showing that right now and they are yeah by the way to your point that Michigan State is a reflection of Tom Izzo Providence is a reflection of their head coach and Ed Cooley he's one tough guy as well Matt Costello hits both and a one-point game again and third foul on Rodney Bullock and Providence, despite getting out rebounded by 21 in their game Friday against Arizona, they were able to win. And they're holding their own against Michigan State and the boards tonight. Chris Dunn. And a foul going for the rebound underneath, and it's a hold against Michigan State. Providence will get a one and one. Third on Matt Costello. 
And it should be a one-on-one -on -one situation. They were lining up like it was going to be underneath. It's a seven-team foul. And it's Ben Ventile at the line, one of one tonight. 18 points, six rebounds for the sophomore. He's averaging just under 23 points per game in this tournament. He's had a breakout weekend here in Southern California. Nice job stepping to the free throw line and knocking it down. And look, he can add to his resume that Chris Paul sat between the two of us and said, I really like this young man's game. So we've been focusing on the star power with Dunn and Valentine. I guess we could get Ben Teal, the best supporting actor here. Well, this and, and, and Forbes as well. I mean, Forbes breaking out tonight with 16. One of the things with Ben Teal, why he's so effective, guys, is he's a mismatch. He's forced to play the five this year. He was set to play the four, but Pascal Chukwu transferred in the offseason, a shocking move. He's now going to Syracuse, so that's where Ben Teal's so effective right now. And that was a real late transfer also, which handcuffed Ed Cooley a little bit. And he had to adjust the fly, which you alluded to. As Chris Dunn just picked up his fourth foul. And that's one that Chris Dunn has to avoid. He, he shot he shot the gap and made the contact and now he's going to have to sit down with eight minutes left to go in this game in a three-point game. There now. Reminiscent of the other night, though. One right. of five at the line. Yeah, he, he went out of the game. He was in foul trouble against Arizona. Then he came back in down the stretch and willed Providence to victory. Nairn misses both. And the rebound, Ben Teal. And just one for six from the foul line for Naren in this game. And now you really got to go to Ben Teal. This also puts a lot in the plate of Karan Cartwright. You just got to manage the offense right now if you're Cartwright. Don't turn the ball over. Try to get high percentage shots. And a good box out by Matt Costello for Michigan State. Rodney Bullock on the defensive glass. Valentine just 4 of 13 now on the game. 2 of 7 from beyond the arc. Hard to get into a rhythm when you pick up two early fouls like he did. No question. And I think it really impacted him in the first half. But he's one of those guys, once he gets one, and we saw it in the second half against Boise State when he went for 15 consecutive points. Once he hits one, it starts to really get that bounce back into his step. Cartwright. And the rebound, Costello for the Spartans, his sixth. Brent Forbes runs the floor. 18 for Forbes, a one-point game. A season high for Forbes, who twice while he was at Cleveland State put 27 points up in a game. Look at how much they're helping off of Cartwright when the ball gets underneath to Ben Teal. Pesikas. Three hit it right over Valentine. And the freshman with his first points of the night. Soft touch from Denzel Valentine. A measured move that time by Valentine. It was just a calming presence when the ball is in his hands. He's like a Swiss Army knife out on the floor. He does a little bit of everything really, really well. Shot clock at 10. Foul on Bryn Forbes as Lamamba was trying to post him up. And it's the second on Forbes. Well, Michigan State turns defense into offense. Valentine has the ball in his hands, looks up and finds his teammate Forbes, who's got 18 on the game. And at the other end, the answer for Providence. It's Fazekas from the outside. Providence by two. This guy from Wednesday night, the Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by the U.S. Marines continues on ESPN. Louisville. And number three, Michigan State at 7.15 Eastern. Then the number 13 Hoosiers head to Durham to take on the number six Blue Devils.
That's at 9.15 Eastern. The game also streaming live on Watch ESPN. Louisville, Michigan State, Indiana Duke. Great night of college basketball coming up on Wednesday. We have a great finish lined up for us between Denzel Valentine and Michigan State. Chris Dunn with four fouls sitting on the bench right now for Providence as the Friars have a two-point lead and Junior Lamamba at the line. And he misses the front end of a one-and-one. One. That's the first free throw missed on the night by Providence. And six of seven. Lamamba very good at pressuring the ball. Side to Deontay Davis. And Davis floats it up and in, and we are tied with five and a half to go. Davis now five of six shooting, ten points on the night. He is 16 of 18 for the floor in this tournament. Rodney Bullock backs down Javon Bess. I mean, if there's a bright spot, I mean, if you can make any bright spots out of Schilling being out, has been how much it's forced Davis to assert himself for Michigan State. And he challenged the shot of Ben Teal. Davis runs the floor, and Davis gives Michigan State the lead. Deontay Davis getting it done at both ends. Back-to-back -back possessions he's been able to score, but defensively disrupting Ben Teal. And Ed Cooley cannot wait any longer. Sends Chris Dunn to the scorer's table to check in. Ben Teal. See, I look to drive him. I don't look to shoot up over the top right the now. Mamba desperation three. Hit it! And they will gonna, check the shot clock. They're going to look to see if he got it off in time. It and they can do that. Did, but they're going to be sure. And the ruling is Ooh. it was a made basket, and it's under official review. As Junior LaMamba, with his shot clock expiring, appeared to just beat the shot clock. But we'll wait for confirmation. Remember, they scored it as good, and you see the shot clock down at one. Ooh. <laughs> I'm going to need to slow it down even more than what we just saw it. That is very, very close. This is a great angle here. I don't, I don't think they're going to count it. I think it's going to get waved off. I think it is still on his hands if the shot clock gets to zero. I mean... It looks like to me that his fingertip is still on the ball at zero. Yeah, they're, they're going to wave this off. And they're pulling over the third official is Tony Padilla and Chris Rastatter working with Zelton Steed, our crew here tonight for this championship game. A good job by this officiating crew to immediately stop play and then go look at it. It's at zero and the ball is still on the hands. Yeah, the veteran crew with Combined 58 years of experience. Worked in numerous NCAA tournaments, and they do wave it off. You're right, Sean. A big moment in this game. I can go from a one-point lead now to back down by two. And, and Chris Dunn now has re-entered the game for Ed Cooley with his four fouls. You try to protect him a little bit here. You put him on McQuaid. Von Bess. Davis pulls it out. Davis against Bullock. McQuaid from deep. Got it! Oh! His first point of the night, and the freshman with a huge three to put Michigan State up five, matching their largest lead of the night. And just like he did against Kansas at the Champions Classic. Chris Dunn is tackled by McQuay in his first foul. Matt McQuay, one of the best shooters coming out of high school a season ago. Chris Dunn helps in. It's the long run out. McQuay's feet are set. And he knocks down the big one. Michigan State up five.
62-57, number three, Michigan State. Has come up with some clutch shots. They've made their last five for the floor, and it's how they've come back. Yeah, fourth foul, Ankur's done. He goes to the bench, and then Michigan State goes into overdrive. They throw the ball ahead, they get out in transition. Davis finishes after Forbes, and then this shot looks like it's gonna put Providence back ahead. It gets waved off after initially going down, and then McQuaid from beyond the arc. The long run out by Dunn, and the Spartans have had the answer. The toughness, not just physically, but also mentally of Michigan State tonight. Valentine is the star of this team, but they've gotten some big contributions from Bryn Forbes tonight And I've really Sean been impressed by Deontay Davis the freshman Oh, he has got such a bright future and the way he's impacted and it's not gonna be in the stat lines All right as we look at the two stars That are gonna have to come up and make plays here down the stretch and starts with Chris Dunn the free throw line But going back to Deontay Davis How many shots he has altered from Ben Teal? When Costello's been on Bentil, Bentil's been really successful. Chris Dunn misses the front end of the one and one. Three and a half minutes to go. Remember, this is the moment there last night, or two nights ago, where Chris Dunn dropped the hammer and put it into overdrive. And can he do it against Michigan State like he did against Arizona? Aaron Harris hey! gets inside. Spins around. For Aaron Harris. 11 straight for Michigan State. Largest lead of the night for the Spartans. They're trying to get into Ben Teal, but the ball pressure is not allowing them to. Chris Dunn with a three, and Ed Cooley gets a quick timeout. Tom Izzo looks away because he knows in these moments, this is where the best players in the country step up and start to shine, and that was a big one from Chris Dunn. Quiets down the Michigan State crowd as he steps in very calmly and knocks down the three. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Michigan State, 247 to play, and you just alluded to it, Sean, that this time of the game, the stars will shine, and Chris Dunn just hit a huge three to end a Michigan State run and to pull Providence within four, but Michigan State's made their last six shots. Well, and that's what Ed Cooley was just yelling across the floor to his team was be tough be tough he looked at ben bentil and said be tough and this is where you gotta man up at the defensive end wave off the shot a foul on floor committed by providence and rodney bullock just whistled for his fourth and harris will go to the free throw line and the double bonus aaron harris will shoot two he's two of two of the line tonight 10 of 13 from the line on the year Eight points off the bench for the transfer from West Virginia, who a couple of years ago was fourth in the Big 12 in scoring. Average over 17 a game for Bob Huggins. Sat out last year. Tom Izzo said about Harris that he might have been the best scout player he's ever had. Well, and now you try to assimilate into the offense of actually playing out on the floor, and he's only going to get better. And you look at Michigan State again tonight, the way they share the basketball. They limit their turnovers, only seven against a high-pressure defense in Providence that forced Arizona into 23 turnovers. And then you share the basketball. 19 assists on 23 made field goals. 82% of their made field goals tonight have come off the pass. Done. Step back, deep two. And the rebound, Denzel Valentine. He faded a little bit on that one, drifted, and that's why it came out a little flat. Good awareness that time defensively by Providence. Corral Valentine. Underneath, Davis. To Harris and Davis takes the rebound away. Gets his own miss. The tip, Valentine gets it. Uh, 
And a 15-3 run for Michigan State. And they lead it by eight. How many times have we seen Michigan State do this? The play looked like it was completely broken down. Denzel Valentine is on two knees. Ben Tilbo was guarding two players. He vacated Davis. You have a wide open shot from the outside, and now it's just toughness. It's want to. Who's going to be tougher underneath the hoop and finish the play? And Michigan State was tougher. Last basket should go to Goins. He was there for Michigan State. Uh, Davis twice got his hands on the ball. They've given it to Davis. But it appeared it was Goins who deflected that one right back into the hoop. So an eight-point game, a minute 38 to go. If you're Providence right now, you've got to start playing with a sense of urgency at the offensive end. And a quick foul. It's not what Michigan State wanted to do. That's the last thing in the world Michigan State wants to do. Third on Nair. If I'm Providence, I'm driving the remainder of this game. 136 left to go. I'm putting and applying that pressure on Michigan State to have to defend without reaching. Otherwise, you're going to earn trips to the free throw line. And now two of three at the line. He has 20. One more for Chris Dunn. And now here comes the pressure from Providence. Outstanding ball movement by Michigan State. But now Forbes trapped in the corner. And a timeout is called by Denzel Valentine way up top. Again, one of the rule changes this year is the coach in a live ball situation cannot call a timeout. It's got to be done by somebody on the floor. And Valentine had the heads up presence of mind to make that timeout call here for Michigan State to save the possession. Leading it by six in this championship game. But the toughness which you've talked about, Sean, with Michigan State, it has showed here down the stretch. They've made some big plays. Well, they buckled down defensively for a large part of this game. Actually, Providence was shooting 50% from the field, something that hasn't happened all year long against Michigan State. Michigan State's defense has changed the tone of this game. Yes, Chris Dunn went out with his four personal fouls, but he still had a great night. But the way they've adapted, and Davis in particular, anchoring the back line of the defense and disrupting Ben Teal has been huge here in the second half. The freshman has given Tom Izzo a spark off the bench. Deontay Davis at both ends of the floor. And Harris goes to run it down in the backcourt. Two for seven in the second half is Ben Teal. The first is monster first six down. of nine in the first half. Here's Harris. Bullock playing with four fouls. And Aaron Harris starts to the basket. Chris Dunn, you got to attack McQuay. Rodney Bullock attacks. And he gets the roll. Timeout Providence with 58.8 to play. And now they're out of timeouts. Harris, as you see the pressure, they come out. And when you come out extend pressure-wise, that's when speed can hurt you. And Bullock couldn't stay with him. And at the opposite end of the floor, a little shot fake elevates Valentine, and that's what created the seam and the gap that time for Rodney to get the two points back. But you can't trade buckets if you're playing Providence. You got under a minute left to go. You got to start thinking about fouling, who you're going to foul to try to elongate this game. 70 64 Michigan State. The problem is, Sean, for Providence, is Michigan State as a club is at 73% for the line on the year. And they are checking the clock across the way, the officials, to see how much time should be remaining here and when the ball went through the basket. I think maybe one, one additional second at the most. But what a, what a well-played game between these two teams. We expected a well-played game. And we, Providence at 6-0, and Michigan State 6-0. And, and we expected the stars to come out and shine. And... Chris Dunn after a slow start and once again being in foul trouble. 21 points, six assists to go with 
five rebounds. Denzel Valentine not having his normal production as far as shooting, certainly not in this tournament where he hit seven three pointers over Cal State Fullerton before he moved to the Honda Center. 12 points, five assists, and four rebounds. Championship game of the Direct TV Wooden Legacy. 59.7 to play. Along with former UCLA captain Sean Farnham, Jeff Goodman, I'm Roxy Bernstein. It's been a tremendous game here between two teams playing at a really high level here at the end of November. And Junior LaMamba fouls Denzel Valentine. And the senior will go to the line to shoot two. It'll be his first trip to the free throw line tonight. Fourth on LaMamba. LaMamba has four. Bullock with four. Of course, Dunn with four. Well, Michigan State, nobody has more than three. 81% on the year. Valentine misses the first. Now, if your Providence make or miss here, you've got to go in a hurry, and I think you get something going directly to the rim. You've got the best point guard in the country at attacking off the bounce. He's strong. He can absorb contact. Earn the trip to the free throw line. Maybe give yourself an N1 opportunity if you can get deep enough. But you've got to go. One out of two. They're going to send Chris Dunn down the opposite end and a little bit of token pressure. Here he is. Deep three. And Denzel Valentine the rebound. And he's fouled with 33.9 to play. I think that one's going to go against Chris Dunn, and if it is, that'll be his fifth. No, they're going to give it to Ben Teal. And that's his fourth. So I think Chris Dunn settled there. I, I would have I would have liked to see him step back and then try to elevate the defense up and then look to drive. Quickly foul and try to keep this game going. Valentine right back to the line for the Spartans. Gets the roll. Michigan State is playing the best basketball in the country, and they're going to get better. And I think right now, you look at Michigan State, you look at Kentucky, they're the two best teams in college basketball. Brent Forbes took a huge step tonight to help his team, and so did Aaron Harris off the bench. Plus the freshman Davis, Rodney Bullock, way out there, way short. And a foul. With 22.4 to go, leading it by nine, Michigan State back to the strike. Fourth on Karan Cartwright. And once they get Gavin Schilling back from the turf toe injury. Well, as Harris continues to understand what his role is going to be. And when you have a player like Denzel Valentine, he makes everybody around him better. Who's the leader of this team? Denzel Valentine. Who's the player that is so unselfish that you have to be unselfish if you're going to be successful and be part of this team? It's Denzel Valentine. He's the one that sets the tone for everybody else. He's got 17. Michigan State also making eight of their last 10 shots from the field as they came from six down here in the second half. And they have... Ran right past Providence and Michigan State, an 11-point lead with 22.4 to play. And it appears that Michigan State headed to the championship of the DirecTV Wooden Legacy. And here's what the Stars did tonight. The numbers, Chris Dunn got some foul trouble in the second half, where Valentine overcame first-half foul difficulty. And both of them, you see similar numbers as far as rebounds and assists. and. They've got off to great starts this year, and they are going to be the faces of college basketball all season long. Uh, add Ben Simmons to them as well, and I think those three right now are the clubhouse leaders as far as the Wooden Award. There's a lot of basketball still left to play, but we, we got to see them both go against each other tonight. Chris Dunn picks up a foul, draws a foul, and we'll shoot two with 17.2 remaining. I've been so impressed, and, and getting to spend time with both of them, too, outside of just the commentating aspect of being here at the Wooden Legacy and the maturity of both of these two stars in college basketball and the way they appreciate where they're at 
the way they're humbled by the attention that they're getting. Uh, but they're both driven by the same objective. And they both want to have their team find success. And they know how important their roles are in, in enabling them to have the team's success. Rodney Bullock has it stripped by Valentine. Trickles out to McQuaid. He races up the floor. And he puts the exclamation point on it. Six and a half seconds to go. So Matt McQuaid with the slam. And it's a 13-point game. The final score might be a little bit deceiving in terms of how tightly this game was contested tonight. Well, down the stretch, the mental and the physical toughness was on the side of Denzel Valentine and Michigan State. Davis the rebound, and that'll do it. Denzel Valentine is the tournament MVP, and Michigan State wins the championship of the DirecTV Wooden Legacy. As the Spartans come back, they trailed by four with six and a half minutes to go, and they win this going away 77-64. Uh, you know, it's it's great to see the two players come out and play the way they did tonight and to think about these two teams and the season that they still have. It's a very long road ahead for both teams, but where Michigan State is at to me is just so impressive. Their overall balance, their unselfishness, their ability to share the basketball. The, the depth they have. And, and it's only going to get deeper. I think Tom Izzo's squad is really poised to finish the year in Houston at the Final Four. So the win for Michigan State. Let's send it over to Jeff Goodman with Tom Izzo. It's all yours, Tom. Tom, pretty good week. You get your 500th win. Draymond comes and gives you a watch. Magic's here. Brandon Dawson. You win this tournament. What was the highlight? We played for football championship. Don't forget that. Uh, you know what? This was a game that you know what, first half, I thought we got outplayed. Give these guys credit. They bounced back. It wasn't pretty, but sometimes you got to win it this way, and I thought they did a heck of a job making some plays down the stretch, getting some big rebounds, hitting some big free throws. I thought Aaron Harris and Zell, they, they came through. Zell finally had kind of an off game, and other guys stepped up. How important was that for you to see? Well, it was. You know, I think when he got in foul trouble, too, I had to keep him out. And it's scary. You went right now whether to put him back in or not. It was tough. Makes it hard on him sitting there. But I thought a lot of guys did. You know, Bryn did a little. Tom did a little. You know, we really got a lot out of Kenny. And, and uh, boy, Didi was was good. But Aaron Harris might have been the, the difference maker tonight. We needed him to come out of his little mini slump, too. Thanks a lot, Tom. Congrats. Thank you. And I think what Jeff Goodman's talking there with Tom Izzo, it is the depth. And Deontay Davis, to me, he was the difference made, maker in the second half. He took Ben Teal out of his rhythm, and then Providence started to struggle. A great win for Spartans. Coming up next, it's ESPN SC for my partner, Sean Farnham. For Jeff Goodman and our entire ESPN crew tonight, it's been a privilege bringing you the week action all weekend long from Anaheim and the DirecTV Wooden Legacy. Good night from Anaheim.